Scandinavian cities are littered with Roman Greco architecture, pillars, and you unpreventedly run across multiple buildings adorned not with the gods of Norse mythology, but Hermes, otherwise known as Mercury. No, not that one. This one. He's usually fixed to a building adorned with a space-aged copper antenna with a mercury ball on top, facing into a public square towards lamp poles with Jetson-esque antenna or mercury balls on top of them. Remember the stories of the old Victorian lamplighters using long sticks with candles, or sometimes on top of ladders? Well, sometimes these lamps are 40 feet in the air with nowhere to set the ladder no way to easily get in the bulb. It got me thinking. As I was strolling into the park, I was thinking, whatever happened to the Spice Girls? What if the Kennedy body doubles were shot and that was the real conspiracy? I wonder if Norwegian women sunbathed topless like the Danish girls. And then I saw them, side by side. Why would you be replacing this with this right next to it? if the wiring was already there. Wouldn't you just replace it? Antique lamps with copper tops and mercury balls, some of them 30 to 40 feet high, where you needed to take the top off just to light the light. It didn't make sense. I thought if there was a wireless transmitter, it had to be higher up and close. And it was. Is it possible this building once powered the lamps for the entire Victorian park? At the base of the park sits a church with this strange copper device on top, and all of the buildings around are always the same. Giant space age antenna made of metal or copper sitting on an octagon geometric base with some kind of ball on top. You see them in every city around the world. The churches and street lamps always have the same as the buildings. Space age antenna with a ball on top, often with an octagon geometry. Was this some kind of atmospheric, plasmic wireless energy system in these cities not so long ago? You have to wonder if Tesla invented this stuff or just rediscovered it. Is that why the Greek god Hermes or the Roman Mercury is all over these Scandinavian buildings? If the idea of using buildings as energy transmitters sounds far-fetched, consider this. Pure copper is rarely found in nature, so it is usually combined with other chemicals to form copper ores. Copper ore contains dirt, clay, and other minerals. Copper mining is done by drilling and blasting with explosives. These mines are usually a mile or two wide. Then crushing them with huge cone crushing machines into smaller pieces. Then mixing that with water. Crushing that in a rod mill. Then crushing that in two ball mills. Then mixing that with chemical reagents. Adding a frother like pine oil or long chain alcohol pumped into flotation tanks where air is injected and the chemical reagents make the copper particles cling to the bubbles as they rise. And that only makes copper concentrate, which is 25 to 35 percent copper. That has to be fed into a furnace with a silica flux and smelted with enriched oxygen flashes. So the iron and silica flux chemically bond and the sulfur and oxygen make sulfur dioxide. 
then that has to be added to two more furnaces with more silica flux and then given an acid bath to end up with 99% copper. Then that has to be refined with a sodium carbonate flux and then electro refined. Copper is ugly, but it's also highly conductive. So why did they go through all of that painstaking trouble to stick it all over their lamps and buildings? Food for thought. Thanks for watching.